Hello everybody, and as always, welcome to the channel. I'm Richard Holdner. While you're here, do me a solid. Do the little like and the share and subscribe and ring the bell, do all that stuff down there so you get notified when I do all this testing. And speaking of testing today, we're gonna look at the most important part of your performance motor and what is it, drum roll? valve springs. I bet you didn't think I was going to say that. Yes, that's right. Despite the fact that you might have like CNC ported heads, a big camshaft and the right intake manifold, heck even booster nitrous. If you don't have the right valve springs, <laughs> you're not going to make any power. And this video is going to show exactly that. When we don't have the right valve springs, we lose both airflow through the motor and power. Now we register airflow through the motor using an air hat. And here's something that a lot of guys don't realize. Airflow through the motor actually goes up with RPM, regardless of what's happening to the power curve. That's right. Even if we rev the motor past the power peak, airflow still goes up. And if it doesn't, that's a sure indication that there is a problem. So let's take a look at two combinations. We're going to take a look at airflow and power and then change the valve springs. Okay, guys, let's jump right in. We're going to talk about the importance of valve springs on your performance motor. And a lot of times, and I found this out when I was doing the big, the big testing that I did way back, and I did it for LS motors, and I did it for, <clears throat> in this case, small block Fords. We did a bunch for big block Chevys as well. Whenever the manufacturers supplied um, cylinder heads for the test, a lot of times they supplied cylinder heads with valve springs that were inadequate for what we were trying to do, at least for the RPM range that we were trying to run. And sometimes they're doing this to make sure that they don't flatten the camshaft. They want to err on the side of safety. But the problem is we get a, a curve like this. As you can see, this is not good. And this is what valve float looks like, uh, at least on the horsepower curve. I'm also going to show you what valve float looks like on the, air, on the airflow curve because we had an air hat on this combination. Speaking of combinations, this was a 5 liter Ford, or more specifically, a 40 over 5 liter Ford flat top piston with valve reliefs. The pistons were out of the hole a little bit. This thing had 10 to 1, near 10 to 1 compression. It had a set of Airflow Research CNC ported cylinder heads that had been milled 25 thousandths. We had our ubiquitous Comp Extreme Energy 274 camshaft. I'll go ahead and put the lift or put the specs up here, but it's a 555, 565 lift. A 224, 232 degree duration split and 112 degree lobe separation angle. We topped this thing with a, an Edelbrock Victor Jr. single plane intake manifold and a 650 Mighty Demon carburetor. We had long tube headers on it. Uh, these were, these were Hooker Fox chassis headers that had an MSD distributor. And we ran all of this stuff on the engine dyno. And here's where we started out with. We started out with the airflow research heads and a valve spring package that I think is probably more applicable for a flat tappet camshaft. So we had 125 pounds of seat pressure. And unfortunately I don't have the open pressure here from my notes way back then. I'm assuming it was somewhere in the 300 open uh, range because it was fairly, it, obviously it was inadequate for what we were trying to do. The motor was on its way to making good power. It made 427 horsepower. Torque was 388 foot-pounds, but you could see here at 5,900 RPM, <laughs> everything just went to heck. <laughs> what happened was we lost uh, valve control, and so because we don't have valve control, the motor is not operating the way that it should. It's not it's not sealing all of that compression in, and you could see it's losing power and just getting very, very erratic. Here's what happened when we did our first upgrade, and that was to change the valve spring package. We put a dual spring package in, but first we only put the outer spring in and that raised the spring pressure from 125 to 135 pounds of seat pressure. And you can see things got better. Um, it didn't fall off nearly as bad. The, the peak power, you know, changed just a little bit because it's, it, we're still getting into a valve control problem right at the same point, right at 5,900 RPM. But it still hung together as we went out past that point a little bit better because it had a little bit more spring pressure. And here's what happened when we added it even more. And what we did was added the inner spring. And you can see now the thing could rev out to where we think this thing would probably be making peak peak power. Peak power was up to 444 horsepower out at 6200 RPM. And given our camshaft and combination, that's probably where this thing would might be making peak power. It still fell off on the top. And I still honestly, given the fact that this was now 144 pounds of seat pressure and probably in the mid 300s open pressure with, with our uh, camshaft that we were running, 
but we did have roller rockers on it. We did have um, stainless valves on it. So the amount of spring pressure that you need to run, one, we're just talking about spring pressure here and you need to talk about spring frequency. The springs actually need to be matched to the camshaft. And if you have aggressive cam lobes, you know, they can become unstable and cause problems almost regardless of what kind of spring combination you have on there. But the spring and cam must work together. But a lot of times we can cure some of this with more spring pressure. And I like to have more spring pressure than this. In fact, I'd like to have when I run these hydraulic roller small block forwards, I like to have 155 or so pounds of seat pressure. And on the open pressure, I like it to be above 350. Somewhere closer to 400 is better. And we've even run stuff that's 200 and 450 um, seat pressure and open pressure and had very good success with it and not had problems. Although we did only run that on the dyno and we didn't run it over a long period of time where you might have a problem with longevity of the lifters and stuff. But this is very important. Um, take a look at the power curves. As you can see, the power curve definitely is just like falling off dramatically when you don't have enough valve spring pressure. So now that I've shown you the power curves, let's take a look at what happened to the airflow curves because we had an air hat. On this combination. Before we get to the airflow on the uh, to correlate that with the horsepower, I want to show you one more combination where we ran into a valve float problem. This was another small block Ford. We had uh, Canfield heads on this one. It was a 330 inch uh, stroker motor. We had um, a dual plane intake manifold on here, hooker super comp headers. This was our uh, Canfield 192 heads. We had the Extreme Energy 274 camshaft in. So a very similar combination. And as I was talking about with this cylinder head test, Canfield was one of the manufacturers that supplied heads and there's, we've used their, had used their stuff and they work really well. But when they supplied them, they were way off on their valve spring that was required to run this kind of camshaft. And you could see we got a big fall off in power from uh, after 5700 RPM. And I'm gonna show you really quickly what happens when we cure that by just changing the valve spring. And you can see the rest of the power curve basically exactly the same, except for the point where we start running into um, the valve control issue. And then the power curve just continued on out and ran smoothly out past out to 63 or 6400 RPM. So again, another example of what happens when you cure valve float. And you can see that there's really no change through most of the curve. It's all happening out on the top. So now let's check out the airflow with our first combination. Just like with our 302, we ran the Canfield headed 330 inch stroker with an air hat so we could see the airflow. And this thing also shows the same kind of thing. So this is our airflow curve when we had our valve control problem. You could see the airflow is going up starting at 2500 RPM, going up at a fair, fairly nice rate. And then all of a sudden here in the 55, 56, 5700 RPM range, all of a sudden the airflow is not going up anymore. And that tells us something is going on. It should just continue to continue to rise. And you can see that in the curve after we have fixed the valve spring on that combination. The same kind of thing happened that, that happened with our other combination. You can see now this is a really good representation. This is what the curve should look like. <laughs> Instead of going up and flattening out like it did when we had our valve control problem, the airflow just continues to rise with engine speed. And that's exactly what this did. And we saw that cured the problem completely. Again, even though we weren't making up power all the way out at 6,300 RPM, we were already past our horsepower peak. But the airflow through the motor will continue to go up. And if it doesn't, it's a sure sign you've got a problem. Okay, now that we've illustrated two examples of what happens when you don't have enough valve spring pressure and you don't have enough valve control, I'm going to show you what happened to the corresponding airflow with our first setup on our 307 Ford with the uh, Victor Jr. intake manifold and the Comp Extreme Energy camshaft. You can see this is the airflow curve of the, we have an air hat, and I'll show you a photo of that. We have an air hat on our combination that measures the airflow as the motor's running on the dyno. And you could see what will typically happen with, so if you don't know, with airflow, the airflow will continue to go up. Even if the power is going down, even if you've reached the power peak, the airflow of the motor will continue to go up. And you can see something happening here in the 6,000 range. And it'll be more evident when I show you what happened to the airflow after we um, started fixing the valve control issue by changing the valve springs. So this is our first combination, uh, our first step up where we've gone from 125 to 135 pounds of seat pressure 
with the valve strings, you can see that we've improved and changed the airflow of our combination. And we saw that we had a, a sizable change in power. You can refer back to that. And then the, this is our final iteration here. So now we have even more airflow. In fact, we're up over 550 CFM. This shows that um, the this is why it's so important when we're running dyno testing to have as much data as possible. So, so the more things that we're monitoring, the more we'll able, we're able to figure out what's actually going on here. So you run into a problem when you're doing dyno testing, if you've been doing it for a long time and you see the thing fall on its face, you go, oh yeah, that's a, <laughs> that's definitely a mechanical problem of some kind. It could be that a rocker came loose or whatever, but that's definitely something. If everything is right and the valves are all adjusted correctly and the thing all, you know, it has even cylinder pressure and all, you go through all the steps to test all of that stuff and you don't, you know, you don't have an ignition fire, there, a, a misfire on the ignition. There are a lot of things to look at. But when you see that, when you see a big change in power and then you see a big change in airflow, you go, oh yeah, those are correlated. That's definitely a valve spring problem. And you can hear it. We, I mean, if, when you're running the motor and it gets into that valve control uh, point, you can hear it. The motor starts start sounding very, very unhappy, as you would imagine, because it's not making any power. All kinds of things are happening. Air is going out, in and out of areas where it shouldn't be going in and out of. It just sounds generally unhappy and, and labored. Um, so you can see here, when we change the, uh, when we change the valve springs, we're changing the airflow through the motor. We're obviously changing the power and then good things happen. I'm Richard Older. Please make sure, like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff and I'll keep testing.